Uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Victor Jungday, and I'm a PhD student at the Center of Energy Informatics at SDU. Uh, and the title of my PhD is Modeling, Design, and Assessment of Innovative Phase Change Material Based HVAC Systems. Um, I'm in my third year, almost in my uh, last year of uh, the PhD in a few months. Uh, so this is a presentation of some of the preliminary work that we have been uh, doing, that I've been part of, and some of the future work that we are expecting to do down the line. Um, yes, and oh, let's see. There we go. Uh, yeah, the project that I'm working with uh, is called the Next Generation Ventilation Project, or NIGIF for short. Uh, the goal of this project is uh, to develop, produce, and to show the feasibility of a phase change material or PCM-based uh, cooling prototype. So I guess you could say it's a bit more practical uh, project than what you've uh, seen here today so far. Uh, but it's a project that is co-funded by the UDP, which is uh, part of the Danish Energy Association for Development of New Energy Technologies. Uh, in this project, we at the university are collaborating with four industrial partners. These are the Danish Technological Institute, which are doing some of the testing of the prototype, Exhausto, which is a local Danish ventilation company. So they are both producing the prototype and doing some of the testing. Uh, Rubitam, which are a producer of face change materials, so they are making the face change materials that we are utilizing and uh, Pizza, which is a control company, which are doing solutions specifically for ventilation companies, among other things. So they're developing control strategies for this prototype that we're making. Um, so for those of you who are not aware, uh, a phase change material is just a, uh, a material that is used in thermal energy storages and um, and these uh, thermal energy storages can typically be divided into either sensible or latent storages. Uh, sensible storages is the easiest and the most uh, yeah, simple process where you're just heating up a material by increasing its temperature. So that means that you are usually limited uh, in how much energy you can store by the specific heat capacity of the material and the, uh, how large a mass you have material. So that usually means if you want to store a large amount of energy, you need a large mass or you need a large temperature change. Um, so this puts a limitation on how much energy you can store within a certain temperature interval. Uh, this is where latent energy storages come in, which utilize the latent energy in the phase change of the material. Um, and, and here the, the Big idea is that you can store a large amount of energy within a relatively short temperature interval because of the phase change contains a lot of energy and it is also almost isothermal. So you can, within a very short temperature interval, you can uh, uh, complete the entire phase change and uh, store a large amount of energy. And that means you can use low quality heat sources. Uh, so, the motivation behind uh, doing this work is uh, that we want to reduce energy use and uh, specifically in for cooling demands. So the target area is HVAC technology uh, in the building sector. Uh, and the building sector, as you've heard previously, uh, make up almost approximately 30% of the entire energy consumption of the, of the world. And uh, of this, about 40 to 50% of this uh, is uh, consumed by heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Uh, cooling demands themselves have been increasing. It's uh, sort of, a, I guess, a, you could say a luxury commodity that has been increasing, especially in offices, and uh, as more, more people, uh, as increased amount of offices around the world. Uh, but all the cooling technologies that exist today are almost exclusively based on refrigerant-based technologies, which have large greenhouse gas potentials. Um, and have large energy use. So uh, the idea is that we want to use PCMs, which have shown great uh, promise in thermal solutions. However, most research and applications in the real world have been focused on passive solutions, where you employ the PCM 
directly into the envelope of the building, uh, thereby increasing its thermal mass. Uh, however, there's not much you can do once you put it inside the building. You can't control it. You can't uh, do any optimization of the operation. Uh, so we wanted to take a look more into an active solution, which is uh, also has seen less research, um, but uh, this is the area we've gone into. Uh, I will not go through too much of this, but I'll just put in the research questions that we associated with uh, with this work. So the first one is uh, related to the efficiency of the operation uh, compared to conventional cooling. So we want to uh, actually have a system that is comparable and efficient compared to the typical refrigerant-based technologies. Uh, secondly, we want to optimize and maximize the operation of this uh, module that we're making. We want to make sure that it's uh, operating uh, yeah, as, as well as it can. Um, and then finally, the a very important part is to, to consider whether or not it actually uh, can provide us an alternative to the existing refrigerant-based technologies. So is it capable of sustaining uh, comparable indoor thermal comfort while using less electricity. Um, so as, uh, as I mentioned previously, there has been a lot of uh, applications of phase change material in uh, research. I just wanted to highlight here one of uh, a similar project made by Menkibi, Paulos, and others, uh, which a couple of years ago, they developed a prototype uh, and published some papers on the modeling, design, and operation uh, of such a system in a laboratory. Um, and here they also did some operations to simulate load shifting with the device, since it is a thermal storage, this is an, uh, an option. And uh, the idea is to some degree to extend on this and actually develop some control strategies for load shifting and operation. Um, but to go more into what, what is this uh, actual prototype about, what is it? Uh, so the prototype is, as I said, a PCM-based ventilation cooling. Uh, we have at this point developed and uh, constructed it, and uh, we refer to the module as a climate module, um, and it works as an add-on to a ventilation system. So the idea is you have an existing ventilation system, and you can just put this as an uh, as an addition to it, and thereby you have cooling. Uh, and you can see a schematic of the prototype here, where you have uh, two stacks of PCM, which is stored in these uh, aluminum containers that each contain approximately two kilograms of PCM. Then you can see here the module with uh, the stacks underneath. So you see these stacks of uh, these storages placed above each other, and then the air can pass in between them in order to uh, take the energy uh, out of the PCM or put energy into it. Um, and then the relative simple operating principle of it is that you uh, solidify the PCM during the night. Uh, you do this by running uh, cold night air in through the stacks and just expelling it to the outside. This will then uh, solidify the PCM uh, by extracting the, yeah, the hot, uh, yeah, the, by decreasing the temperature of the PCM. Uh, and then when cooling is needed during the day, where you have hot, high uh, ambient temperatures, you can run it through the stacks and supply it to the room uh, and thereby cool the air. And, uh, and the module like this that we have developed is uh, designed for small office room, a medium-sized office room of maybe around 30, 40, 50 square meters, depending on the amount of people who's in it and so on. Um, so in order to quantify the added benefit of this uh, climate module and to demonstrate some of the expected performance of the concept as a whole, uh, we developed a dynamic energy performance module uh, for the room, uh, also with the overall ventilation unit, so with the heat exchanger that is uh, for heat recovery and the climate module as a whole. Uh, and we did all of this, uh, we've done all of this in MATLAB so far. Um, and the interaction between these components and how the air flows can be seen here, I will not go into details about this. Um, but the climate module itself is modeled using a 2D numerical method. Uh, so we have discretized the 2D heat equation 
and we're solving this using the ordinary differential equation solver in MATLAB. Um, the PCM model we have also included hysteresis in, so we are considering that there is a difference between the melting temperature and solidification temperature of the material, as well as that the process itself is not completely isothermal, uh, which of course decreases the potential in the storage, but it's an important parameter to, uh, to consider. Um, yeah, and then furthermore, we've yeah, of course modeled the heat exchanger and so on, the ventilation. And uh, as Tao also mentioned earlier, we're doing a room model, which is based on uh, IC model, where we have uh, thermal capacities and uh, resistors uh, used in order to, uh, yeah, to model the indoor room temperature. Uh, and the idea is then to utilize this developed model to simulate the behavior of the system in two different cases. Uh, an expected case, where we're using design reference year data for, from Denmark for an entire year simulation. Um, but since these data uh, are based on statistics and are also a little old at this point, they don't really contain some of the extreme temperatures that we have become more accustomed to seeing in office environments. So we're also using a small, <clears throat> small data set uh, that we measured at SDU, a five-day uh, data, excuse me, uh, a five-day data of extreme temperature data. <clears throat> Uh, in order to show the performance of the system in this can, uh, in this more extreme uh, case, since this uh, this is not the, the system it is designed for, it has a higher sort of uh, risk of uh, of having bad performance than the typical refrigerant based uh, systems. Uh, and in both of these simulations, we have compared, or in these yeah, analysis, we are comparing with refrigerant based cooling. So. Uh, we are comparing based on thermal comfort that it is, uh, is uh, that is observed in the room and the electricity use of the all of the components, and uh, some of the preliminary results that we have got that uh, sort of show what you would expect in the sense that we have higher thermal comfort with the refrigerant-based uh, solution, but you also have higher energy use. So the the system sort of has shown itself as a as a middle ground in this way. Um, yeah, and then briefly at the end, I would just like to mention some of the future work that we're expecting to do and some of the results that we're hoping to get out of that. So we, we have done some parametric analysis of melting temperatures and flow rates and so on. Uh, but we want to do more design configurations, especially under different climatic conditions, since all of the analysis that we've done so far has been for Danish environments. And we're expecting that uh, that is an increased potential in more southern European, or at least in areas with a higher cooling demand. Um, but we also want to see how the, the, the system itself needs to be designed in these uh, configurations. And then we also want to do a holistic comparison of the operation of the module with refrigerant-based cooling, both in terms of the energy efficiency, uh, the environmental side of it, costs, and the thermal comfort. And then uh, lastly, we hope to also do some implementation of some intelligent control strategies uh, for demand response that will uh, hopefully yield some reduced operational costs and uh, maybe allow for providing balancing services to the grid. Although that's more of a, yeah, that's more of a research thing than a, an industrial side point. Uh, yes, that's uh, that's what I had. I know it's uh, maybe a little short, and these are some of the uh, references that I showed in the presentation earlier. So, any questions?